What's kicking, everyone? It is Oarsworthy. For the first time, I will be doing a video review on something, be it a video game, a movie, a music album, or TV series. The possibilities are endless. Every review I do will each have their own sub-series entitled appropriately to how I like or dislike something I have played, watched, heard, or seen. And what better way to start off my first review on a video game I got into, called The Twelve Slot Saloon. Just a quick disclaimer before I get into the video review. The 12 Slot Saloon is currently a demo build, and therefore has spoilers, so I highly recommend to those who are watching this video to have either played the demo first, or wait until the full game is released to avoid them. With that said, let's get into my review of the 12 Slot Saloon. As stated by the game's developer and creator James Yvonne, the 12 Slot Saloon is an RPG game that focuses on a cat known as Fast Food, who was dragged into the soulless desert and in order to go back to his home world, he must obtain a soul. Yvonne cited multiple inspirations he used for this game, but it'd be quite extensive to explain them all here in one video, so I'll just truncate it down to a few. It takes inspiration from The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, released in 2000 for the Nintendo 64, and 2003 to 2004 for the Nintendo GameCube in terms of plot, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, Earthbound, and Paper Mario in terms of overall gameplay and art style, and Undertale in terms of the battling system. But yeah, aside from all that, let's get into reviewing this game piece by piece. The first thing I am talking about is the story behind 12 Slot Saloon. Long ago, there was a Reaper of Death who was charged to harvest a soul unlike any other they have gotten. This soul was kind and selfless that only wanted to bring joy and had no dreams of their own come true. It has also inspired the Reaper to create a world of dreams coming true, where anyone with an invitation can make a wish and live in the world filled with undying dreams. Eventually, an amnesiac cat meets a familiar being who notices the world of dreams coming true might be fallen apart by the second. Upon learning of this story years ago, I was destined to play the game demo when it was finally announced. After all, I am a huge fan of Paper Mario and Pokemon, but I was definitely not expecting the Undertale elements to come into play for this game I'm talking. When I first started playing 12 Slot Saloon, I did not know what I was doing until I started experiencing my surroundings and playing around with each key until I learned a certain action. The main game itself reminds me of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, Paper Mario, and Super Mario RPG, Legends of the Seven Stars, as the backgrounds give homage to the environments in said games. Throughout the game, you are assigned with puzzles and it is up to you to solve them. How the game wants you to solve said puzzles is rather creative, because it allows you to go through save files and repeat at the point you saved in order to complete them. What's more, the statues as you progress will always say something as if they are speaking to you while acting as a save object at the same time. These statues are worth your time listening to if you want to take good notes and be charged before you save your progress. Enemy battles are also quite enjoyable for me. First, you can attack enemies, as that's not so important, though the only downside is that they try to attack you first in many ways, which can make the game slightly unfair for beginners, or those who are unfamiliar to Undertale. Next, you can use power to make your battle strategies easier. I admittedly did not use it that often, so I cannot tell you in full detail how this works. Actions allow you to communicate with the enemies so that you can try reasoning with them without having to resort to violence. So if there is one thing I absolutely love in battles, it is the items. I mean, just look at how exciting and innovative this game can be when you use an item in battle. And last but not least, you have love. When using love, the party members can use these symbols such as mercy and wit. Mercy is a love symbol that allows you to give enemies something rewarding, even when they don't deserve it, and wit allows you to think outside the box to weaken your opponents and make them come to their senses. And the last thing I am talking about in terms of gameplay is when you defeat an enemy. You kill them by destroying their core and getting experience points to level up, or spare their life. How you decide on finishing a battle pays off here. 
because certain players might choose to either gain experience points at the cost of an enemy's life or let them go without reason, though at the risk of not gaining anything in return, except gold. Overall, the gameplay is fun. There may be some kinks here and there, though at the time of writing and making this video, the creator is said to be fixing away at them, thus making the experience more enjoyable as we speak. And how can we forget a game without its character roster? By looking at the art style as well as how the characters are presented, these characters are memorable to me, and a few of those names are sure creative too. Because the character roster in this game so far is just too perfect, it is only fitting that I start with the main protagonist, Fast Food. He is a cat who I thought looked a bit like a human at first, but as per the game's description, he knows little to nothing about the wish he made, only the knowledge to his wish is near to bring a happy ending to the land without happy endings. Having a character like that at the start, but slowly have them remember stuff as the player progresses, can really help create character development for them, and fast food is no exception. Did I forget to mention you can name him as well? Well, you can, so long as you don't use expletives. Yeah, don't do that. My next character who appears in the story is the unnamed Annoying Girl. While she doesn't have a name in the actual game, I'll simply refer to her as Strawberry, only because she didn't have that much of a purpose other than to bake a cake. When you join her in baking a cake, she asks if you are ready to be baked. I replied with, wait, what? Even though she was joking about the idea of doing it. Later, Strawberry slowly becomes unhinged to the point where she goes along with the idea, although for how insane she can be, I will give her a little bit of praise to emphasise how emo she was towards the end before clearing off after fast food calms her down. Though let me remind you, she is not that high up on my list in terms of characters for this game. We now bring you to Puppy, a humanoid dog who dresses like a detective. Just by looking at his overall appearance kind of reminds me of the Arthur character, Buster Baxter, as a detective. Notice the resemblance? <laughs> Whoops, I'm getting a little sighty twat, so let's continue. You know, when I first started playing this game, I thought he was some sadistic dog who thinks too highly of himself and puts on over-the-top challenges that could have seriously injured fast food. However, I realised how quick-tempered Puppy is and has a hard time in making friends because of it, so I could not help but feel sorry for this little pup. And just by looking at it, he reminds me of Blaze the Cat from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. These next two characters are only found in the dream world. They are Lament and Puppo, or Poopo. James Yvonne, I don't know which pronunciation is correct, though I'll let you decide on that one. Anyway, they're the two shadow saviors who give you advice throughout their appearances in the dream world. And if you think about it, they remind me of Puppy's figment of imagination while fast food is sleeping. And because Lament is permanently trapped in the dream world, he might go insane from the loneliness, though he sure does a great job in protecting said dreams from being overrun by nightmares. The second to last character on this list is Samuel, a kind-hearted, bird-like gentleman wearing a green tunic and greyish trousers. Bartender and owner of the 12 Slot Saloon, Samuel is humble and down-to-earth to everyone he sees and is always there to lend you a helping hand when you visit the saloon. And last but not least, we have Samantha. Like her husband Samuel, she too wears green and loves him very much. She is slightly eccentric and loves creating contraptions to make everyone's lives easier. There are a few things I need to point out that I have not previously covered in this video. For starters, some of the music in 12 Slot Saloon sounds peaceful to listen to on repeat while you have a few preparing you for fight or flight and there are those when you encounter certain characters on your commute. My favourite music from the game would have to be the beginning as it reminds me of starting my day off on positive terms and preparing for the possibilities along the way. And the final thing I would like to say about this game is the presentation behind it. Anyone can move the characters with ease, and at the very beginning, there is an overview of the controls to let people know how the game works and why they all move. Plus there are obstacles that differentiate to their behaviour. Black ones indicate you must jump over them to avoid taking damage or being sent back to the start, while the green ones signal you not to jump as you could get hurt by them in midair. Though the only negative I have in terms of presentation is how many health points you get in the beginning and how much damage you deal with when you are only a level 1. This kind of surprised me as I died twice while playing. 
But in my second one, to get to the maximum level, I didn't even die once. Before I get into the final version of the game, I will weigh all three main parts of it individually. Let's start with the story. The premise behind 12 Slot Saloon is one I will never forget because it reminds me of all the inspirations around that game, especially if the style of that game uses some elements of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon and Earthbound for the environments you traverse in. This well-written story is worth listening to and will definitely get players falling in love with this game. That said, I rate the story a 10 out of 10 or Dark Green Exceptional Band. Next, we move on to the gameplay. Almost everything about the gameplay is perfect, aside from the fact that the obstacles can hinder some people, particularly those who want to look at every aspect of the game whilst they play. What stands out the most is how you have to solve puzzles by reloading your save file and collecting the objects that help you. My rating on the gameplay is incredible, so I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10, or Dark Green Exceptional Band. And finally, the characters are well presented and can easily be related to one another by the players, though Strawberry kind of gave me an earful when she tried to bake fast food alive as well as becoming unhinged by claiming that nobody loves her, though thankfully he was able to cheer her up with words. The characters get an 8 out of 10, or Pure Green Great Band. And now, the moment of truth. My final rating on the 12 slot saloon is... A 9 out of 10, or Dark Green Exceptional Band. The 12 slot saloon was very enjoyable for me, and I loved every detail about the game as I played through, allowing me to immerse myself into this wonderful world of inspiring dreams, with happy endings of course. Well, that just about wraps things up, I have been Orsworthy, and I will see you next week for another review. Join us next time as we review All Time Low's Nothing Personal.